let's try this walk and talk again here. I don't know how much time I have because um, I have a lot of photos on my phone and last time I was recording a video just cut off abruptly so if that happens again you'll know why so <sighs> out for a walk and there's no one around as usual lots of birds are out the birds are liking this shutdown but I feel like this is a big flex of state and federal power right now and it's really bizarre I think we can all agree with that and it does not make a whole lot of sense either um, my dad's actually going back to work tomorrow and I was like well you know he's he and a lot of family members are of the opinion that this horrible plague is upon us and that's the reason why all this stuff is shut down right now and I asked him I'm like well are you gonna have to wear a mask and gloves when you are back at work I mean you're gonna be around thousands of people etc no they uh you know no one's been sick at work they've been shut down for two weeks so of course no one would be sick at work but they've been no one's been sick at work, so therefore it's okay to go back to work, okay? So his place is able to get started up again. A police helicopter going by. So his place is able to go back to work, but restaurants, industry is basically shut down. I mean, there's really no one out and about. There's a lot of people around here and no one is out and about. So, I'm still allowed to walk, I believe. <laughs> I think I'm still allowed to be outside at this point. I'm not a, I'm not a danger to society, a contagion or something, if you will. It's a little windy and cold though, but it's just sad to think about I don't know I'm wondering I'm like are people just really just in shock right now do they really believe the news um, are people confused is this like a long game people know when to react and when not to you know like a chess game or something it's just it's absolutely insane to me what is going on right now and I think that's part of it too. Maybe just like a break from reality. Um, see how far it can be pushed. I think if the state governments, flex of state government power, and it's just so bizarre to me right now how, well, actually I've seen this before. The Democrats really, really cheering for authoritarianism right now. And they seem to do this a lot. And they act like the Republicans are like the worst party ever, but they're the ones who are saying, Trump's not doing enough, he should have done more. You know, people that I know are saying, oh, you know, people in other states are like, oh, they should have shut down my state sooner. They should have done more to shut everything off. I'm like, they've already declared, everything's already in a lockdown. Like, I don't know what else people want I mean do they want does it make any sense to have grocery stores shut down I mean I think we are gonna have problems with food they're already telling people that there aren't enough migrant workers to um, get all the food that we're gonna need for next year something that's what I've kind of seen in some of the articles so that would be the only reason why I think people would start to go nuts as if there are massive food shortages. I'm not talking about toilet paper, but I mean like long sustained shortages of food. And that would probably, in my mind, be the only thing that would get people out of the house. Maybe really nice weather, but when everything, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So, I think there are people 
individuals who are just itching for something like that to happen so that they can flex their power. And that's really concerning to me. So, hoping patience will win the day because this is just crazy right now. I know in some places you can't really even go for a walk now because that's not essential or something. So, just continue to be outside as long as I can. This is how I like to live my life. <laughs> so, thinking about this idea of invisible enemies, I touched on this last video. And I talked about this the other day too with, um, oh, actually, there's a car going by. I was talking about this the other day as well with joint stock companies. So just basically ways to terrorize large groups of people. This idea of the invisible enemy that's all around us. And plagues are the way that this is done. So I'm concerned about the concept of poisoning of the well and this is a very effective tactic that's used on groups of people large groups of people and um, that's how people get poisoned right and so an idea of a plague is kind of hit or miss if you're trying to target a population but something like poisoning of the well is a lot more controllable first of all and more devastating so that's something I would personally be concerned about if you're talking about trying to control masses of people and of course it's a big giant operation so and we've been told it's operation the government straight up says this is an operation so we have to look at it that way And to see what, what the end result is as far as all this money being taken, being told, you know, six trillion dollars is being levied against us and that it's gonna go back to us in a twelve hundred dollar check. And they're gonna lend money to municipalities, state governments, and local governments. So money's being taken out against us. And then we have to pay to have that money. We have to pay interest on that, of course. Basically, that's my point. <sighs> so easy for me to get spun around in this huge subdivision here. <laughs> so foreign to me. Anyway, I just wanted to touch on that. I have more research on what I've seen as the operation of Salem, the Salem witch trials and how that morphed from the witch trials to a couple decades later, how it became the inoculation controversy. Same area, Marblehead riots and uh, the buildup before the Revolutionary War and how the same people who were saying that there was a, an invisible enemy, right, plaguing people, making people crazy, having all these trials going on, basically the idea of the witch hunt, right, that term comes from it, to this inoculation controversy where history says people were either clamoring for the inoculation, which I don't believe is the case, or people were rioting because their friends, family members, and children were being injected and dying. And they said that's what was causing people to get sick. And these boats were coming over full of sick individuals and similar ideas of quarantine, a lot of the same stuff, you know? So 
Um, what started off as just a weird connection to Harvard University has now kind of become an all-encompassing research topic for me because it appears as though this same playbook is used against people over and over again. It's all these big operations that are used against people. And of course, the enemy is invisible, right? It's something that we can't see. It just kind of floats around in the ether. You have to cover your face. You have to isolate yourself. You have to stay away from people. Can't trust anyone. Got to tell on your neighbor, that sort of stuff. Same, same sort of operation. So just wanted to share that with everyone.